Welcome to our series on practical compositing. The goal of this series is to introduce you to a wide range of concepts and serve as a framework to build your compositing skills in Nuke. It's designed primarily for junior and mid-level artists, but it would be beneficial to anyone looking to improve the efficiency of their workflows. This course will focus on broad concepts, highlighted with simple examples, and further illustrated in separate appendices. These concepts are a culmination of years of experience across a broad spectrum of the visual effects world, from feature films, television, commercials, and everything in between. Before we begin, one of the most important things you can do with Nuke is to actually read the manual. The manual holds an invaluable amount of information, information that even some of the most seasoned artists are unaware of. While reading it in its entirety would be great, the important thing is to familiarize yourself with its general layout. That way when you get stuck, you can more quickly get to the root of the issue and troubleshoot it. Whether it's how a tool works, to larger concepts like camera tracking or the Roto Paint toolset. Nuke has three main help avenues. The first one is the user guide. The current page count on that I believe is 2200 pages. This is really the meat and potatoes of the help documents. The user guide is the deepest level of information and speaks to the broadest concepts of the workflows. This is a great resource for learning new tool sets or working to improve your current knowledge of a tool set. Next up is the reference guide. Make yourself very familiar with this document. This document lists all the tools inside of Nuke and what each of their inputs and knobs do. There are six pages on the merge node alone. And with this document, you can really get to the specifics of a tool and figure out exactly what all of those inputs and knobs are doing, and it's a little bit easier to navigate than the user guide is. The other main avenue is online. If you go to learn.foundry.com, there's a wealth of information there beyond the user guide and the reference guides. There's user forums, there's tutorials like this one, and the developer guides. Beyond these three avenues, you can also get help from inside of Nuke. The help menu is just that. It has shortcuts to the various help sites as well as keyboard shortcuts and other utilities regarding licensing and everything else. In addition to the help menus, you can also use the help button in the corner of every tool property bin to show you a brief description of what that tool is and maybe some tips and tricks on how that tool works. Beyond that, you can also hover over most knobs and get a brief description of what that knob is and how to use it. The next thing I want to talk about is organization. One of the central themes to this series is organization. Without it, the work can be vastly more complicated than it needs to be. Before you ever have a script, organization starts with your source files and folders. Having clear naming conventions and an easy to understand folder structure will greatly aid in your compositing efforts. There are a myriad of different ways to do it, but I'll share one of my preferred methods in the appendix of this chapter. Clearly naming assets is a good habit to get into, eliminating spaces or other special characters is also helpful, and will be less of a headache down the road. At its core, Nuke is really just parsing a set of ASCII instructions, so just like in programming, having ASCII and parser-friendly names makes things go smoother. Knowing where to start is good, but knowing where you're going is really important. While planning your work, don't forget to plan the files you'll be outputting. Output doesn't just include your final render, in many cases you'll have to generate media to aid in the compositing. Whether it's a pre-comp pass, a denoised pass, reformatted or resized, or cleaned up assets. These will all need to live somewhere, and it's better to think about that beforehand. I've seen too many scripts to an asset or two that live at tilde slash desktop. I'll uh, show you. These are, these are, this is one of the bigger scripts I've ever personally dealt with. And this script alone, I think, has many hundreds of nodes. So you can see, you know, really, really quickly how being organized can make your life considerably easier. You know, this is, this was the culmination of weeks of work for multiple artists. Less is more. Sometimes you have to do work before you can do work. In our modern world of mixed formats and ultra high definition capture, the desired output resolution is regularly not the same as the source material. Depending on the need of the end client, many times there's very little upside to actually working at native resolution. The best course of action is to actually reformat your working files into something more manageable. Remember, UHD has 4 times as many pixels as HD, and 8K has 16 times the number of pixels. So if you think about a median tool that takes a little while to do some work at HD, multiply that times 16 for an 8K plate. 
Take care when downsampling, though, as it has its own pitfalls. Not all filters are made equal, color depth and color space need to be maintained, and not all productions take kindly to it if you have maybe downsized their plates without their prior approval. So it's best to have a thorough discussion about the output resolution with all the vested parties before work starts. Next up, we're going to talk about some tips and tricks and get into some specific folder structure and organization tips. Uh, things I've picked up over the years that I find are very useful in a lot of different style of productions.